The Polaroid SLR 680 is what many believe to be the best Polaroid camera ever made. And you know what? They might be right. The SLR 680 is a great camera and also maybe like the last great thing Polaroid ever put out before they went bankrupt originally in the early 2000s. The 680 is a Polaroid integral camera, which means that it takes the instantly recognizable white bordered framed image that develops all on its own and not the Polaroid peel apart film that was also available at the same time. It follows in the footsteps of the Polaroid SX70, which was released in the 1970s as the very first integral Polaroid camera. The SX70 is a very classic camera especially those first models that look like they're really made of metal, even though it's just a brushed metal finish. The folding design is a personal favorite of mine, not just because of how unique it is, but mainly because of how off guard it catches people who don't know what it is until the moment you fold it out. And then it's just like an amazing thing. So yeah, pop up. There you go. What? With this design, the viewfinder on the back actually sees through the lens itself and not a separate viewfinder as was the case with most Polaroid cameras. Originally, the SX70 had manual focusing and then later on they introduced sonar autofocus, which is this gold circle here. It emits sonar that bounces off of the subject and back at the camera and the focus adjusts automatically. Very, very cool Polaroid. The SX70 cameras take SX70 film, which is a lower ISO instant film of about 100 or 160 ISO. So it's rather limited outside of bright outdoor settings, and that's when you need to have an additional flash unit. The SLR680 though takes Polaroid 600 film, which was introduced originally in the 1980s. You're probably familiar with most cameras that took Polaroid 600 film because it looked like this with the boxy design and the flash that folds up. Also very, very classic looking now. In 1982, Polaroid rolled out a professional camera for the 600 film, the SLR 680. It took the design of the Sonar SX70 added a flash unit on top so that the front is absurdly tall and retailed for about 265 American dollars, which is about $800 today. Other 600 cameras were closer to $70 or so at the time, which is about $250 today. The SLR 680 has a four element glass lens, auto or manual focus, exposure compensation dial, built-in flash that can be turned on or off, and a tripod socket, which might not seem notable, but the original SX70 launched without one. It is a little silly with how much is stacked on top of the lens, especially in comparison to the original SX70, but it is definitely more reliable in comparison to the boxy 600 cameras. Today, picking up an SLR 680 will set you back like $300, uh, maybe a bit more. I mean, you might find one buried in a thrift store, which is awesome if you do, but they are pretty rare. So of course the question kind of remains though, is it worth it over just like a cheap 600 camera? Okay, I got a double pack of Polaroid 600 here. This is from production date of May 2022, so earlier this year. Should presumably be great. And we're gonna shoot one pack in the SR680 and then one pack in the cool cam and do a very basic side-by-side -side to see if we can tell the difference. I'm not actually gonna make you guess which one is which here. I'm just gonna throw them up side by side and we'll take a look. With this first shot, things are pretty similar between the two of them. The shot from the cool cam is on the left and the SLR 680 is on the right. The cool cam shot came out a little bit warmer and the SLR 680 is a bit cooler, but that's not necessarily a camera thing and is really more of an unpredictable film thing. These were both scanned on an Epson V700 flatbed scanner and I see no real drastic difference between the two. This comparison isn't super accurate because the lighting changed after I took the picture with the cool cam on the left, 
so I had to wait for the sun to come back until I took the SLR 680 shot on the right. The big difference between these two shots though is the contrast. The SLR 680 has given me much less contrast in comparison to the cool cam shot. And the lower contrast results of the 680 are apparent in the rest of these shots as well as you'll see. This is an old abandoned small race way that is by my parents' place. Um, it's always interesting to wander around this destroyed building. Again, not much difference in like sharpness or detail with the supposedly better glass element lens of the 680. Still just warmer results on the cool cam and lower contrast results with the 680. Another comparison that isn't super accurate, with this shot the cool cam flash didn't fire for me, but the SLR 680 is at least more reliable with the flash and gave me a much brighter image. A bit cooler for this cool cam shot, but it really is just the film being like a little inconsistent within the pack, but also combined with the slightly cool temperature outside that day, which does impact the color as it develops. This is a really high contrast shot with the window on the right and the shadows on the left and the 680 handles it slightly better than the cool cam. That lower contrast result with the 680 was consistent throughout the entire pack which wasn't something that I really expected necessarily. Besides that though, I just don't see a massive difference between the cheap boxy cool cam and the premium SLR 680. This shot of my parents is definitely better on the cool cam because of this flare artifact on the 680 shot. The 680 is easier to compose with definitely though because you see through that lens whereas the standard 600 cameras have their viewfinder right beside the lens so it's a little harder to be precise. The artifact at the top might be a result of not having a frog tongue on the 680 to protect the image right as it comes out of the camera. I have one on my SX70 and I suggest picking one up from Polaroid if you have an SLR 680 or SX70, or really just a camera that doesn't have one, because I do think it makes a difference. So I think in the way that it matters for exposure and sharpness, there is not a big difference at all with what I'm seeing between this super expensive Polaroid camera and this much, much cheaper one. I'm still loving the SLR 680 though, largely because of the design, and I've been really happy with most of what I've shot with it. It's Polaroid film, and at the end of the day, you might just have some random misfires even when you're using one of the best cameras that they ever put out. Like, I don't even know what happened with this shot. There's not many variations of the SLR 680 besides this one. There's the SLR 680 SE, which stands for Special Edition, and is only cosmetically different, so don't worry about it. And there's a gold-plated 680, which is really just, uh, I don't know, like a collector's thing, something to brag about. The SLR 680 was only in production for a couple of years, but it was popular. And in the early 1990s, Polaroid put out the SLR 690, or just the 690, I guess, based on the labeling. The 690 has some different electronic internals, but is the same camera overall. It's just rarer, so people uh, try and charge you more for it. I've also heard it's more likely to malfunction, but I don't have like hard numbers on that. I've talked a lot about Polaroid over the last few years on the channel in different videos, but I do really believe that probably the SLR 680 and the 690 were two of the last great things they put out before bankruptcy in the early 2000s. Also in the 80s, they launched the Spectra cameras and film, and those were a lot of fun and I did like them before Polaroid killed them again, but there was never like a high-end SLR Spectra camera. And then after that, it was things like the Captiva and the Joycam and the iZone, things that were probably fun at the time, but uh, just in hindsight, 
don't really have like a lot going on for them. So really the 680 and the 690 were like the last two kind of really impressive things before uh, bankruptcy. Now, I also don't know what it was like to shoot Polaroid 600 film in the SLR 680 in the 1980s because the film is quite different now. And Polaroid is, as always, a bit of a mixed experience when you shoot it. You can get good looking results, or at least what I consider to be good looking results, especially when you think about everything that's gone into bringing this film back since 2008. But if you don't like the results that you get with a cheaper boxy Polaroid camera like this because of the Polaroid film itself, then shelling out several hundred dollars for one of these cameras isn't gonna drastically change your experience, I think. The SLR 680 is very fancy and a little ridiculous maybe, but I definitely feel like I never need another Polaroid camera besides this one. Probably. But if you don't love Polaroid film, then you're probably fine without picking one of these up. Thank you so much for checking this out and especially a huge thank you to Tony who is a supporter of the channel and has been for quite some time and he has sent along a variety of instant film stuff over the past year or so including very graciously this SLR 680 which came from Retrospect which means it's a refurbished one and I will link to that in the description below. So a big big thank you Tony as always for sending any of this stuff along. There's also links in the description below for ways to support the channel. And before I go, I also want to talk about uh, Silver Grain Classics, which is a film photography related magazine that issues, I believe, uh, four times a year, something like this. This is the fall 2022 issue of it, which is issue number 16. And I am actually in this one. They contacted me about uh, writing a little article about the channel and everything, um, which was really, really cool. So this is in here. You can find a link to this in the description below. Um, don't necessarily buy it just because I have a little article in here. You should buy it because it's an amazing publication that has a lot of very talented work showcased in here and a lot of interesting stuff. So definitely check out Silvergrain Classics because there is so much passion put into this publication and it's so cool to see. Thank you so much for watching and for everybody that supports and for people who give me the opportunity to do stuff like this or who send stuff like this along. I will see you soon.